.NET Aspire just reached general availability GA. It's out into the world, making it easier than ever to build distributed cloud native applications with .NET. Now I've done a video on how to actually add orchestration and all the amazing things for .NET Aspire into your .NET applications, but you might be asking yourself, James, I'm just building a Blazor app or a .NET API, or I'm building a Python app, or I'm building a Node.js application. Is Aspire for me? The answer is yes, of course, because every application should be Aspireified. You should be able to add Aspire into any application because .NET Aspire has many components. And that's what I want to talk about today, how every single developer out there today can take advantage of a little bit of Aspire or a whole lot of Aspire. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, first and foremost, if you want to learn all about .NET Aspire, check out the brand new page on the .NET website, read the entire general availability blog post by Damien and the team, and of course, check out the Aspire video series if you want to learn more about the dashboard, components, service discovery, service defaults, telemetry, and so much more. There's tons of great stuff. But today, what I want to do is I want to talk about how you can use a little bit or a whole lot of .NET Aspire in your application, whether it's .NET or not a .NET application. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here I have a simple Blazor application. It's a Blazor server app. This could be any Blazor application. It doesn't matter. It's just a Blazor application. That's all it is. If I actually go ahead and run this, you'll see that there's nothing special inside of this Blazor application. I just did file new. I added a few pages to it and that's it. But here we have a counter. We have a weather, we have an API that's calling out and doing just a Git requ uh, an HTTP request to the GitHub backend, and that's it. So if we take a look at this though, when I ran this application, if I go into my logs, we can see that I'm getting tons of additional traces and metrics going on here to help me diagnose my application. So this is something that I added in to give me insight. Now this is pretty verbose and it's kind of hard to read because I'm just doing it in the on the console, but you can see that there's a whole bunch of things happening here, which are pretty interesting. How did I get that? Well, if I come back over into Visual Studio, we can see down here that I'm using open telemetry. Here I'm going and I'm defining how I want it to be logged with a format of messages, including the scopes. I'm adding metrics and tracing. These are just the defaults here. So I'm getting uh, client instrumentation for HTTP, runtime instrumentation, and then I've added this console exporter here. So I actually open up the uh, package references. We can see I'm just using the instrumentation for ASP.NET Core, HTTP, and runtime. You could also do gRPC. And then I'm using this console exporter here. When I use that console exporter, I get that information in my logs that you just saw. Now, like I said, you can use a little bit of Aspire or a whole lot of Aspire. So let's just say you just have an application and you want to, I don't know, visualize this data. That would be pretty fantastic, right? So let's go check this out. In fact, you can just run the Aspire dashboard, which is an amazing open telemetry dashboard, just standalone. In fact, it's just a Docker image over here. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and I'm going to first and foremost come down uh, into uh, my PowerShell. Let me just clear this out. And I'm going to run this command, which is this Docker run command. And this is going to go ahead and basically run the and pull down the uh, Aspire dashboard right here, uh, which is just on the Microsoft container registry. And then it's going to go ahead and open up some ports for me. And it's going to have an ingestion of 4317. This uses gRPC to ingest this in, which is supported by OpenTelemetry. So I'm just going to run this. There we go. And I don't have it locally, so it's just going to download the image for me automatically, which is quite small, and it is going to run it. Perfect. So now the Aspire dashboard is running. If I go into my Docker desktop, here it is. I can tap on it. And what I'm going to want to do is find this login to the dashboard here. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on this and it's going to go ahead and actually open this and it's not going to be visible because I'm going to need to replace 0000 with local local host. There we go. And now the Aspire dashboard is running right here on my machine. There's nothing in it here. It's just running on HTTP so I can pipe some information in there, but I need to get the data in 
to the dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into my project. I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, manage my NuGet packages. There we go. And I'm going to search for open telemetry exporter. And you're going to add this first one, which is the open telemetry protocol. Basically this enables you to send the data through a protocol of anything listening out there through HTTP or GRPC to it automatically. So let's just go ahead and refresh this here. And I'm going to add that into my project. Perfect. Cool. So now I'm going to go back into my program and I'm going to delete these council exporters because I don't need those anymore. Perfect. And there's many things that you can do with the open telemetry data. You can pipe it into like Azure monitor. You could do it in Prometheus or Grafana dashboards, all those other things. But I'm just going to say, um, use OTLP. So open telemetry, uh, exporter here, protocol exporter. And that's it. That's all I'm going to change in my application. Now notice here, I've also given it as a service name of blazer app, which is kind of nice. So all I need to do now is just run the application. So here we go. I'm just going to use the app. I can click around. I can look at the weather. I can get the API. We can refresh this. There we go. Now, if I go back over into my Aspire dashboard, hey, look, check this out. We have all of the different structured logs coming in here, which is pretty cool. I can actually tap on one of these uh, details, for example. I can get information uh, specifically around what is kind of happening here. Uh, here, for example, we can see now the URI, the connection, the headers, I'm getting all this information basically for free from open telemetry. I go ahead and tap on one of these uh, stack traces over here, get a little bit more information. I'm sure there's one that's a little bit more insightful. Here we go. So this is the blazer app that's calling out, making the request, how long it took, and then rendering it back. And I can get details of what exactly is going on in each of those. We can also take a look at metrics. So for example, here I'll select the blazer app resource. And what we can see is that here I have all sorts of metrics coming in. So here's all the requests. Here's the durations that everything took coming into the application. I could look at the different time lengths and there's all sorts of different process information. If there was GC or JIT compilation or other things in this, in the world of .NET and thread counting and all these things, open connections and active connections and all these different information that'll help me diagnose my application in more insight. I can get table view, I can get graph views, I can see how long these are taking to show up inside of my application, which is pretty cool. So if you just have an application, you could just export it and boot up the Aspire dashboard for your local dev environment sort of, of awesomeness going on here, right? Now we could take it a step further though. So for example, let's say we wanted to go back to the Blazor application and we didn't necessarily want to have all of this code here. Um, we could surprisingly just add the service defaults that Aspire gives us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go in, I'm going to say add, and then I'm going to say a uh, new project. And I have the Aspire templates here installed. So I'm going to go to .NET Aspire and I'm going to say, please give me the service defaults. All right. So here's my service defaults. I'm just going to add them there. Perfect. Now the service defaults are a collection of what the ASP.NET Core team and the Aspire team think are some best practices. So here, this can give us, uh, in configure open telemetry, our health checks, uh, service discovery, and a whole bunch more. So it'll give us a bunch of things if we want them optionally. So what's great about that is that I can customize this. I can share this between my applications if I decide to do more than just the Blazor app. So what we could do is we could go in and instead of adding all this information here, we could just say builder dot add service defaults. All right. So that'll all be set up for us automatically. So from here, we could still customize it. So if I wanted to add this add configure resource, I could go into those extensions. And I could, you know, on this here, just add that in and that will go ahead and add that into the service. So it has the same name and everything that I want on it. Now at this point, what's great is I could come in and delete all of this code that I had inside of here. I don't no longer need that. So that's really cool. Just add that extension method. Now, if we go back over here, we can see that it's adding the open telemetry exporters and here it's specifically looking for the hotel exporter endpoint. So I could add this endpoint into my settings if I wanted to. Additionally here, I could just configure this here when you use the full aspire dashboard and everything like that, all added next, it's going to set this automatically for us. So we're just going to add it because we know that this is running and we'll be good to go. Now on top of this, you're also going to get things like uh, default health checks, for example, that are all set up for slash health slash alive. 
Now, if we want to use these, we actually have to map these defaults. So I'm going to go back into the program and I'm going to say app dot map default endpoints in here. That'd be cool. And now I can just run my application. So not only am I using all the open telemetry stuff all set up automatically, but now I'm getting these default health uh, checkpoints automatically. So now let's go ahead and use this app. I'm going to go ahead and click around, go into the API here. Awesome. I can say slash alive. It's healthy slash health. There we go. It's all healthy. It's totally good to go. And we're awesome. We have this all up and running and it's great. And we could customize that, right? If we wanted to do additional checks there. And now if I go back over into the Aspire dashboard, I'm getting the same type of stuff in here. I'm getting all the spans. I'm getting the initializers. I get all that same information automatically as we would expect coming into the dashboard. And of course, I can customize it further as well. Okay. So what we just did is we took just a Blazor application. We already have open telemetry that was just doing council exporting. We simply added the open telemetry exporter, which then sent it into the Aspire standalone dashboard that was just hanging out, having a good time, uh, which is pretty awesome. And we saw all the visualization data. Now, beyond that, we took it a little bit step further and we said, hey, let's just use all of those cool things that the Aspire projects would normally use for service you know, defaults, basically. And like, what's cool about this is that we get those sort of best practices, resiliency all built in and all these other great things. But now you're saying, okay, well, at this point, all I could do is I can continue to just deploy my application like regular. Yes. You don't have to change anything. You just keep deploying to app service or to some other host, anything like that. You're totally good to go. But then you're saying, well, James, wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to run the dashboard separately, right? What if I could just go into Visual Studio, run the application, the dashboard would come up and it would show me this information. Can I do that? And the answer is yes. So let's head back into the application. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, add a new project. And inside of here, I'm going to add an app host. Now the app host acts as an orchestrator of multiple .NET projects, and it can even add in Node.js projects as well. In this case, I just have one project. So here I'm just going to say next, I'm just going to create it and I'm going to be good to go. Now this program is very minimal. It just is a distributed application and it says builder.build run. So all I need to do here is just drag and drop this into the app host. And now I can come in and say, uh, builder dot add project. And I can say projects dot blazer app six. I could give it an idea of my blazer app. There we go. And that's it. Now in this instance, I only have a blazer app. So what I can do is set this as the startup project. And instead of starting the Blazor app, I'm going to start the app host of this application. And what this is going to do is it's going to look for all my projects, in this case, one, and start them up automatically for me. In addition to that, since I'm starting the app host, it's going to launch the .NET Aspire dashboard. Now, this is a different .NET Aspire dashboard from the one that I showed you that was the standalone. In fact, I can go into Docker desktop and I'm going to stop this completely. So it's not running at all. And I'm just going to show you that this is the .NET Aspire one that's built in. In fact, we get a little bit more in here. We actually get a console output inside of here. Here's the Blazor application. We get structured and traces and metrics all set up for us automatically. And we get these resources that are here. Okay. So we go ahead and pin this here. Now, here's what's neat about it is that this is showing me my project. I can jump to the logs, get to my details. So what I'm saying is if I have just one project, this is of high value for me because now I can click on the endpoints. I can use and debug my application just like I normally would. And then I come in and I get all my console logs. I get all my structure logs coming. I get all my traces coming into my application and all my metrics uh, for these applications that are coming in, right? All automatically. So from a developer's perspective, What's great about this is that I can just run and use my application just like normal. And I don't have to change anything at all. I didn't change anything in my application. In fact, if I wanted to, I could come in to my Blazor application and I could just come in and say, you know what? I don't need any of that open telemetry stuff on that other stuff. I could just say, if, you know, debug here, you know, don't do anything. Right. And then. And then now I'm just using it only at debug time. That's it. hundred percent just for local development, getting insight into my application. 
But I could also customize this and say, hey, instead of just doing an open telemetry exporter, let me just put it into, I don't know, Azure Monitor, or I could export it somewhere else, for example. So a few options there, which are really nice. So I love that about it. And at this point, yeah, I can just come into my Blazor app and I can publish it just like I always have. And I could publish it to Azure, to a container registry, to a folder, to a server, anything, right? It's just a Blazor application. Now, if you want to, because you are inside of this, you know, uh, .NET Aspire app host project, I could right click and publish the app host. And what this does is it takes my application and says, hey, this is an orchestrated application. So what I can do is have the Aspire framework basically generate this manifest that Visual Studio knows how to publish to Azure container apps. But I don't have to, right? That's not forced. Once I've added this Aspirefication to my application as much or as little, I can still go to the exact same places that I've always published. So that's what's really nice. But now you have the added benefit that if you want, you could start to add in, for example, if I do add, I could do add Aspire package. And then we have all of these Aspire packages that are readily available there. So you can start to add in these components. And then of course you could configure those automatically. Um, and you could add in more services and you could orchestrate that together. Now, the nice thing here that I'll point out is that this app ID uh, that I've project ID that I've given it is just a connection string. So if I added a back end project and a front end project, it's just connection strings at the end of the day, which is super nice. All right, there you have it. I wanted to show you how awesome .NET Aspire is, even if you're just using the Aspire dashboard for your open telemetry on your local development machine. I think it is super powerful to super boost your local development experience as you integrate open telemetry into your application to get deep insight to find those performance bottlenecks. Now, these are just very simple applications, but you could imagine the scale of them as it goes on. And you can use as much or as little as you want, which I think is powerful. So hopefully you found this informative and, and found that you can just start adding and using this stuff today. There's nothing stopping you, even if you have a single application or you have just a back end and a front end. If you are interested in a lot more, check out my other video uh, over here that I'll put about how to actually fully go all in on Aspire. But again, you can still just deploy your application like you normally would um, and use it locally for great development purposes. But if you're interested in more, check out all the great docs and all the things that I'll link below. Hope that you found this video informative, hopefully, no matter what type of application you're building. If you have any questions, let me know below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to jam on that like and subscribe button. So until next time, thanks for watching.